Jaya Gopi Janavalabha Kiri Varatahirha Yasur Nandana Bhaja Janahan Jadhaya Jasur Nandana Bhaja Janahan Jadhaya Jamun Jamun Tira Hadar Yahiam Jahiam 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 Hare
है हम राम है हारे कृष्ण हारे कृष्ण 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 हारे हारे हाय राम हारे राम हार हम राम हारे हारे हाय कृष्ण कृष्ण हम राम हे थाय घर हरि भरि 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 जाय जाय प्रभु भा प्रभु भा प्रभु भा जय प्रभु भा प्रभु भोर फिर मना दे हरि हरि बोल श्री प्रभु भान की जाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया सो वी विल रीड फ्रॉम Mm-hmm. Let's see here. यदस्पस्यपस्यसी कौंथेय 
Tadtukurusvamararpanam Yad Karosi Yad Anasi Yad Jahosi Dadasi Yad Yad Tapasyasi Kaunteya Tad Kurushwa Mar Arpanam Whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you offer or give away, and whatever austerities you perform, do that, O son of Kunti, as an offering to me. Purport. This is a duty of everyone to mold their life in such a way that he will not forget Krishna in any circumstance. Everyone has to work for maintenance of the body and soul together, and Krishna recommends herein that one should work for him. Everyone has to eat something to live, and therefore he should accept the remnants of food offered to Krishna. Any civilized man has to perform some religious activity ceremonies, therefore Krishna says, do it for me. And this is called archanam. Everyone has a tendency to give something in charity. Krishna says, give it to me. And this means that all sus surplus money accumulated should be utilized in furthering the Krishna conscious movement. Nowadays, people are very much inclined to the meditational process, which is not practical in this age. But if anyone practices meditating on Krishna 24 hours a day by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra around on the Round on his beads, he is surely the greatest meditator and the greatest yogi, as substantiated by the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Om Gyan Timiranda Sya Gyana Jana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Vena Maha Sri Chaitanya Manobi Stam Stab Titam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swam Padanti Kam Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasari Gaura Bhakta Vindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So Krishna is giving some direction here. So what is the direction? Everything should be done as an offering to Krishna. So Krishna makes it easy. Whatever you do, whatever you offer, whatever you eat, offer it to me, then eat it. If you have some work, do that, but offer the results to me. Think of me. Make me the object of all your activities. And this way, you go on with your activities and then make Krishna the, uh, what we say, the benefactor of the activity by offering the results to him. So this is the process of Krishna consciousness. How do we learn this process of Krishna consciousness? How do we know what Krishna likes and what Krishna doesn't like. How do we know what to offer to Krishna and what we shouldn't offer to Krishna? Because there are things, just like Krishna says, um, we should eat, but we should eat in the mode of goodness. And then he mentions those things that are in the mode of goodness. And then he mentions those foods that are in the mode of passion and the foods in the mode of ignorance. So he mentions those foods in the mode of goodness are the things that we should eat and we should offer them to him. We cannot offer slaughtered uh, living entities to Krishna and say, well, we're offering, we're doing our activity and offering it to him. So there's rules and there's regulations, there's principles why? Why follow anything? Why just just that Krishna is God, and we are His uh, His uh, servant? So why don't we just do whatever we want, offer to Him, and call it devotion? Because just like 
when you want to do something for a person, you learn what they like, and you do that, and you learn what they really don't like, and you avoid that. So Krishna is a person, he has likes and he has dislikes. Uh, although you might say he's God and he's everything, yes, but still, he is an individual, and he, although he creates everything, everything he creates is good. But when we take what he creates and change it around and make it something that is uh, done in the wrong way or with the wrong motivation, and that becomes something that is deviates from the standard of what the Supreme Lord can accept, and therefore we should avoid that. Like it says, eat, but don't eat, you know, food in the mode of good uh, ignorance or passion. Uh, glorify the Lord with prayers, but make your prayers uh, one of his glories, his names, his forms, his pastimes, uh, or how you can make advancement in devotional service. So everything is done in a certain way. So if, therefore, Prabhupada has started this International Society for Krishna Consciousness to, to un give us an understanding of what Krishna likes and what Krishna doesn't like, <laughs> how to serve Krishna and what to avoid in the name of serving Krishna. So in that way, we have a organized sim sim set of rules and regulations which helps to guide the living entity towards activities which are favorable to the Supreme Lord. When there is no guidance, when people do whatever they want in the name of religion, they're acting on the mental platform. And therefore, they might be right sometimes, but most of the times they're wrong. Because as God is, what we say, transcendental to everything material, He's beyond the senses, he's beyond the mind, he's beyond the intelligence, he's even beyond one's imagination. No one can know God simply through one's own strength and efforts. One has to know God by the process of how to know God, and that's given by the spiritual master. Now, a spiritual master is not a person who simply appears in this world. A spiritual master also has his spiritual master who has his spiritual master, and you take a line of simple spiritual masters, and when you connect it backwards to its original, you'll find the original spiritual master is Krishna. Another name for Krishna is called Adi Guru, or the original guru, who teaches the process of devotion to himself, and, and empowers others with that same knowledge. And those who accept that empowerment and develop that knowledge completely are called pure devotees. So God cannot be appro uh, approached directly unless one approaches Krishna through the process Krishna sets up. So in other words, if you want to, you know, you want to go to school and get a degree, and you have to abide by the institutional rules and principles that govern the studies and the requirements in order to progress and then eventually uh, get your degree. You can't just go in and you know, create your own subjects and then, you know, or uh, just do whatever you like and then expect to get a degree. You follow the institution. So in the same way, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness is an established institution which is a branch of Lord Chaitanya's teachings, as Lord Chaitanya mentions, or I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami mentions in Chaitanya Charitamrita that this ISKCON movement is, the, is a branch of, the, of Lord Chaitanya's uh, uh, teachings. And so the branches come out by a great soul who is a unalloyed, pure devotee of the Lord, 
who is empowered by the Lord to teach the principles of pure devotional service to the conditioned souls. That person is one who practices himself, knows the process, and can teach the process to others. Sometimes we use a cliche, he knows the way, he goes the way, he shows the way. <laughs> like that. But as a spiritual master, he can't have just two things. Two. He can't just uh, know the way, but not show the way. He teaches by example. Uh, the word acharya means one who teaches by example and not just by words. <laughs> Sometimes people think, oh, well, if I can just read books, then I can be spiritual. <laughs> um, you can gain much spiritual knowledge, but the application of the knowledge is, is taught by those who are living that applied knowledge in the day-to-day -day life. So in order for that knowledge to really manifest in realization or practical application, one has to have you know, guidance from the spiritual master. So the rules and regulations that govern the activities within the process of the spiritual development are, you know, the principles that we abide by. And we find every institution, all spiritual institution, may have different rules and regulations. So just like some people, people might say, well, why, why should I chant 16 rounds? Why can't I just chant as many rounds as I want? Well, you can, over 16, but in order for you to practice Krishna consciousness according to the designated uh, principles given by the pure devotee of the Lord, who represents the Lord fully, it's required to have a certain numerical vow and fulfill that vow as the, uh, what we say, the principle of one's spiritual development. Same with the rules and regulations. No illicit sex, no intoxicating, no, no meeting, and no gambling. So why are those established? Why not other rules as the, the main principles? Because the pure devotee knows what are the foundations that, that cause everyone to fall into sinful life. And therefore, it's in the Shastras that these four regulative principles are the pillars of all sinful activities. So the guru teaches on behalf of the Shastra and teaches by example, and he also guides the person up to the point where they can actually understand how to follow the principles successfully and get the benefit. So this is the importance of an institution where the institution comprises not only the the uh, activities of devotional service, but the guru, the guru's gurus, such as the acharyas, and the principles of devotion that have come in directly down from Krishna himself. When the acharya refuses to obey, obey the uh, institutional rules, um, or the leader fails that there's a breakdown in communications, and we do that at breakdown, certain deviations fall in. For example, we had, uh, Srila Prabhupada talks about his spiritual master's movement, the Gaudiya Math. So his Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj established the Gaudiya Math with certain principles in line with the teachings of his spiritual master going all the way up to uh, Sri Krishna himself. And so, before he left, he left some request in order for the institution to continue. And therefore, um, he was instructing that these must be done. Otherwise, our movement will not grow or will fall apart and there'll be a lot of dissension. And he said that, uh, you know, we're not going to elect the next Acharya, but what we're going to do is to establish a governing body commission in order to rule the institution like that. And everyone can work in conjunction to the higher manageable and preach Krishna consciousness. Bhakti Siddhanta had many qualified sannyasis 
who were outstanding in their practice and great preachers. And so, although he was such a powerful spiritual master, somehow or other, those who were following him when he left the planet, they failed to follow that instruction. Mm -hmm. And because they failed to follow their instruction, two of the, uh, what we say, leading sannyasis started to fight over the position of being the next guru. Mm -hmm. And it became so, what we say, calamitous mm -hmm. that it went into the courts and stayed in the courts for 40 years, actually. And therefore, Prabhupada writes in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, because they failed to follow the instructions of the guru, the institution collapsed. And then because of that, there were so many factions. And then everyone had their own ideas on how to continue Krishna consciousness. And Bhagavad said they were basically asara. Asara means useless. They couldn't do anything. So Prabhupada reestablished his, his spiritual master's movement in the form of the International Society of Krishna Consciousness. And immediately after establishing his society, he established the governing body commission, not at the time of his departure, but at the beginning of his, his uh, teachings to his fledging American disciples who were just coming to Krishna consciousness. And therefore, after the... Uh, Departure of Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada said, now one must follow the manage, the highest managerial society, and that is the Governing Body Commission, which we know as the GBC. And because of that, our institution or our society remains together as one and uh, has avoided so many calamities and ultimately was prevented from being destroyed. Just like there were court cases against our society. But Prabhupada organized the society in such a way that no one could, could, could bring the whole society to court. They would have to, each individual temple was an individual entity of itself who was under the governing body commissioner from that area. So when they tried to sue our movement, they could only sue one temple or another temple, another temple like that. And so that prevented our movement from collapsing and losing all our assets and ultimately, ultimately all the devotees. So Prabhupada was very intelligent knowing the importance of an institution and how it guides people spiritually and managerially. And that's very important because in any institution or any, any organized way to practice anything in this world, there must be a set of principles and rules and regulations. And generally in Kali Yuga, people don't follow rules and regulations so easily. They like, it's the tendency to make their own rules and regulations. And even Prabhupada, when he was here, he had to very strictly guard against that when even some of his own uh, uh, disciples were making new policies on how to organize our society. They wanted to uh, they wanted to centralize everything. Prabhupada stopped it. And so, uh, when you have a institution and you have a pure devotee who is guiding that institution, he sets up the principles of how the institution works, and both from the managerial point of view and from the spiritual practical point of view, if when people follow that then everything works nicely because the pure devotee is guided by Krishna himself. So therefore, having an institution is essential, especially in Kali Yuga, where everything is chaotic and the whole idea is do your own thing in the name of whatever you're doing. <laughs> no matter what you do, just do, do something different like that. And so Prabhupada uh, manage the society in such a way as to set up a set of principles of rules and regulations that were written down even in the early parts of knowing that what happened to his spiritual master's institution after he left they refused to follow what he had established 
and therefore there was no organization to reinforce anything, and therefore Prabhupada said they had all become asara, and they were just fighting amongst themselves for who was the next guru, and therefore the preaching practically stopped completely. <clears throat> so this was the uh, the uh, concern. Do we need an institution? Yes, an institution means an embodiment of the principles of spiritual life given by Krishna and organized and uh, applied by his pure devotee and those who are in what we say you know, following the pure devotee means that they must adhere to that very strictly otherwise if they go outside of that they're breaking the instructions of the spiritual master and therefore they become what we say useless it's like an arm or a leg cut off from the body it may look good but it has no effect so these are some of the important points and we saw how a strong organized institution such as this con society has maintained itself throughout the years besides being challenged inside and outside by other ideas other than what Prabhupada established Ultimately, because of the sincere sincerity of many of his Prabhupada's senior disciples, they kept Prabhupada's principles as forefront, but it was very difficult, extremely difficult. And even today we find out there are new principles coming up which needs to be understood and organized in such a way that it goes in line with Srila Prabhupada's teachings and the teachings of the previous acharyas. So, more than any uh, feature of discipline in this world, whatever you uh, adhere to any form of discipline, spiritual discipline is the, the most organized because there are so many opportunities to change and to do something different. And it may look like something spiritual, but it, it, it's simply the creation of one's own ideas. Okay. And we have the example in history, the, the uh, what we say, the losing of the effectiveness. I mean, Bhakti Santa Saraswati's movement was so powerful. They had set up 60, they had set up um, 60 mosques all over the uh, continent of India, and they were preaching not only up in Bengal, but all the way down to Cape Corn. They had, they, it looked like they were about to establish Krishna consciousness all over the India. There was such a powerful movement. But at one point, things became a little bit, what we say, uh, contentious. And when Bhakti Siddhanta ultimately left, things fell apart because they did not follow his direction on how to manage the society. Okay, and therefore Prabhupada prevented that by establishing everything ahead of time, even before he left. And not only did he establish it, he made it work. He showed how the GBC should work. He so showed how temples should work. He explained all the practical managerial aspects of the spiritual process. And so it gets all the support it needs in the proper way. And so we are we are called Prabhupada Nugas. <laughs> we follow Srila Prabhupada because of his pure devotion and his uh, expertise in organizing Krishna consciousness around the world. Not only did he set up this, the management society, he made sure it was working. He traveled around the world 14 times and visiting all his different temples to make sure things were going on according to how they should be going on. So this is the importance of an institution which is spiritually guided by a pure devotee and follows the principles of the disciplic succession and it adheres by scriptural evidence coming from the Lord himself and from the Lord's pure devotees. So these are some points uh, 
about the importance of spirituality and institutions. <laughs> like that. Um, sometimes people say, well, there's some problems with the institution. Yeah, there is. Sometimes there is. And the, real, the problems are real. So therefore, rather than going outside of the institution, work inside the institution to change the problems and better the, what we say, uh, situation like that. We can speak about this subject in quite detail. There's many, many historical evidences, both within our society and previously. But it shows that because of Prabhupada's determination and his expert management, Prabhupada was an expert manager, not only a great spiritualist, our society is going on and growing more and more. Okay, so these are some points on institutionalized spirituality. <laughs> Mm -hmm. One question. Um, in the end of the chapter about Dhruva Maharaj, Shri Prabhupada said, quote, if some of my disciples would become so powerful as Dhruva Maharaj was powerful, he would be able to lead me to Vaikuntha, end quote. How, how to see this in the light of, in, in, in the, light of the fact that Srila Prabhupada came here to save us? Hmm. That's simply a statement of humility. <laughs> a, a great soul actually doesn't think himself a great soul. <laughs> As Prabhupada used to say, what I have ever have done is simply by the grace of my spiritual master. People say I have, I've done something wonderful, but because I have strictly followed his instructions, therefore I have become successful in established in this Krishna conscious movement. So it says, Prabhupada has mentioned many times in the scriptures there, a great soul actually doesn't think himself a great soul. And so many times there is some expression of that humility. And then this is one case where he's saying it, that uh, my disciples are actually even more advanced than I am. And if they become even more advanced, then they can bring me back to the spiritual world. That's a that's a humble statement. Um, where we find those statements, we find other statements similar to that. As Prabhupada was saying that all of my disciples are actually my gurus because they have come from the mercy of my guru who has sent these disciples to me so I can... Uh, spread Krishna consciousness around the world. It is simply his mercy. So Prabhupada in one statement says, I see my spiritual, uh, my disciples as my, my uh, teachers also. <laughs> but everyone knows, just like when Prabhupada was leaving the body, just before he left the body, he was apologizing for speaking so strongly he said, oh, I spoke so strongly, you know, I committed so many offenses. Oh, and everyone said, no, no, you cannot commit offenses. So Prabhupada, just before he was leaving the body, he was exhibiting his mood of Uttama Arikari. An Uttama Arikari is one who sees everyone serving Krishna more than he is. And therefore, he doesn't feel qualified to preach. But... The second class platform 
is the platform for preaching. So Uttamarakari, when he comes from the spiritual world, he comes to the second class platform, not the first class platform, and for the sake of discriminating between who is a devotee and who is not a devotee, and teaching and discriminating between situations. And therefore, in order to preach, they have to do that. So therefore we say, Jayom Vishnupad Paramahansa Pariva Jakacharya. So Paramahansa is the highest platform. Parivakacharya is the next platform down. So that verse or that statement, glorifying this pure spiritual master, says he comes from the first class platform down to the second class platform in order to spread Krishna consciousness. So this is the nature of a great soul. They think themselves unqualified. They think themselves very low. Just like we have the song of Bhakti Vinoda Kaur, Amara Jivan, Sade Pape Rate, Nahi Opoyera Lesa. Amara Jivan, my life, Sade, always, Pape, sinful. My life is so much full of sin. When I see someone happy, I feel unhappy. When I see someone happy, unhappy, I feel happy. He goes through the song, whole song describing how he's, he's talking from the position of a conditioned soul, but he's not simply presenting them himself in a way to teach. He's actually feeling like that. So this is the qualification of, a great, of, a, of advancement. The more you make advancement, the more you feel less and less and less. <laughs> But still, a great soul, even though he knows he's very unqualified, still he's been given that position, therefore he serves the Lord in that position. It's just hard for un to understand from the position of material, material life. One has to understand this position simply by Accepting the principle of how devotional service works, the more one becomes advanced, the more one realizes how unqualified I am. Just like we say, the feature of knowledge is the more you learn, the more, the more you realize how little you know. <laughs> Those who have a little knowledge think they, have, they know everything. But as you make, but one who is honest, realizes that the more I learn, the more the, the more I learn, the more I realize I don't know anything. <laughs> so these are some of the characteristics of a humble Vaishnava, not presenting themselves as being very great. Simply the humble servant of the previous acharyas, that's all. Do you have any questions? Okay. He has more to say? No? Okay. Anything else? Mm -hmm. um, is it proper to question the institution? And I mean, to which extent should we do that? Even though if... Hey, it's not improper. But at the same time, one has to question 
with an idea to understand. In other words, you can always ask questions and express your doubts in the form of a question, but ultimately you have to accept the answer. It's not that we simply blindly follow, like it says in the uh, in the verse Tadviri Pratipatena, approaching a spiritual master. Uh, what we say is absurd inquiries and blind following are rejected. Mm -hmm. So one has to know why they're following, and ask questions which are relevant to the to their practice of Krishna consciousness. So you can ask whatever you feel you need to ask. It has to be presented in such a way as you want to understand. Not that you're presenting your own ideas in the form of a question. You can say, well, this is what I think, and but please give me some understanding or i don't i see this situation as not being conducive to krishna consciousness uh, please help me to understand you know in other words there may be you may also point out certain things in the institution that needs to be corrected but it has to be done in the right way it's not like Everything is perfect, but the thing is, the perfect organization is in place. In order to reach perfection, it takes time. We have to keep go working through the various, what we say, challenges and situations. Just like we just had this whole situation with whether women can become spiritual masters. So that was before the GBC for six years and they finally they couldn't ultimately come to a conclusion so finally there was some conclusion that finally came this year so it took that at least six years to actually bring up enough discussion evidence and to actually get everyone on board to come to some kind of unanimous decision so Running an institution, a spiritual institution, requires a great amount of, uh, what we say, intelligence, uh, dedication, uh, complete surrender to the instructions of the spiritual master. It's not, it's not simply so easy. And as time changes, Sometimes rules and regulations are also changed in order to fit the changing circumstances of the times. Mm -hmm. What was the qualification of becoming a disciple when Prabhupada was here? And what was what is the qualification of becoming a disciple now? So that's changed. Mm -hmm. And it was even changing while Prabhupada was here. He was instituting more requirements like that. So, yeah, so as time goes on, therefore the institution has to redress some of their own statements to see if it's still relevant. Just I'll give you, a, give you an example. Uh, we were at a leadership meeting, a temple, com what was it? Uh, temple uh, president's meeting and sannyas meeting many years ago. In America so this was like 20 years ago so there was Prabhupada had said 50% of all the profits for book distribution that is made in the United States should be sent to India to support the temples in India okay so after Prabhupada left that they were still doing that. But then after a while, things changed in the situation where India was growing and America was going down. And they were still sending 50% because that was Prabhupada's instruction. 
So the question is, well, we have to redress this question. Is it still relevant to follow this instruction? Obviously not, because it's hurting the temples in America to continue to send 50% of their, you know, profits overseas. So that was changed. Mm -hmm. That was changed. So yeah, it's not easy to manage a society year after year. You have to see how to redress some of the same issues that come up the year before and see if they're still relevant and apply maybe new, new ideas or new terms. Mm -hmm. And that takes sincerity and dedication to the instructions of the spiritual master. Anything else? Uh, this is question by Lila Avatar Devidasi. Hmm? Uh, Lila Avatar Devidasi. At the beginning you spoke uh, about food and prasadam. And the point was that we should always uh, eat food uh, prepared by devotees. Uh, what to do in situation when uh, we are with our family and they prepare something for us? Hmm. Well, What we used to do is that when we would go home and stay with the family, we would cook for them. And sometimes if they cook for us, what we would do is to say we will, we have to offer it with prayer. So I would, my mother would sometimes cook for me when I was home. But I would always make sure she cooked things that were in line with... Uh, our diet, and then I would say, well, then we take a picture of Prabhupada, and, and I would show her how we uh, offer our food to the to the spiritual teachers and to God before we eat, and the food becomes blessed. <laughs> we call it blessed food. I don't. We don't call it prasadam. So we may be able to do that occasionally, but. If you find yourself living there every day in that situation, and best if you can do the cooking. <laughs> but to please the family, sometimes we let them cook and then we show them how to offer everything. Make sure that there's no pots that are being used for unmentionables. If it's done nicely, the parents will understand. But if like that. Unless they're against Krishna consciousness, which I assume they're not, then you don't even want to be there. <laughs> Is that all right? Okay. Any follow up on that one? Okay. Leela Avatar? I know uh, Milan Malen, Malenic. Milan, Bakta Milan. Um, is it possible to get free from the false ego? Even while we are advancing, it is still present in more subtler forms. Yeah, that's true. 
because this false ego is the most subtlest forms of the conditions living entity, it's the hardest one not only to get rid of, but to recognize. <laughs> but false ego really culminates in the idea that I am the endure and I am the enjoyer. Mm -hmm. So as we work on these two principles, I'm not the enjoyer, I'm the servant. I'm not the doer because whatever I can do, now everything is supplied to me by the Lord or by the material energy. And uh, so one has to remove themselves from the idea that I am the, the doer and I am the enjoyer. So when we do something and people are benefited by that, we like to take credit for that. But that's why we say, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to my spiritual master. We should always remember that Krishna says, I am the ability in all living entities. So when Krishna takes away our ability, then we start to understand, I can't really do things. And when he gives you the ability, then we can do so many things. And he wants us to do so many things. He wants us actually to do great things. But there, that is the danger, that we have a tendency to identify with our, ourselves as the cause of the results of activities. And as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, what is that verse? Mm, 247 in Bhagavad Gita. Uh, you have a right to perform your duty, but you're not entitled to the results of action. Never consider yourself the cause of the results of your activities and never be a, not attached to doing your duty. Subhadikara ste mafale chukadachanam mak fulor tu mak Mount Sun Ghost Sukarmani, something like that. Uh, I forgot the Sanskrit. 247 in Gita. So, yeah, we are not the doer, and we at, this, at the same time, we have to not, we have to be attached to doing our duty anyway, and knowing that the results are given to us either through the material energy or through Krishna directly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, false egos is difficult. But if you associate with devotees, then they help you they help you recognize your false ego. <laughs> the more you associate with devotees, the more you, you'll be able to see your own false ego. When you don't have association, then you're, it's very difficult to uh, mirror your own uh, self. Mm -hmm. Anyway, just realize that Krishna is the ability in all living entities. <laughs> if he wants, you can't do anything. <laughs> and if he wants, you can do everything. <laughs> but he empowers you according to how much you surrender. Okay, so we can stop here. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai.